Hi everyone. I'm not sure if some of you just heard me, but we'll be starting uh, the webinar in uh, one or two minutes, just letting a couple more people um, get on before we begin. All right, well, I'll begin. Hello, everyone, good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone's been having a lovely week so far. Today, we're gonna be going over some of the basics of Give Big St. Croix Valley. If you have any questions, you can use the questions section in your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, Sarah is also on the call. Um, so if you have any other specific questions about the event, she'll be able to answer them. So let's begin. My name is Lisa Galpern. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Mighty Cause. Um, and I'll be one of the key people from Mighty Cause helping with this event. So if you've asked a question in support, you may have already received an answer from me. So just a little background about Mighty Cause for those of you who are not familiar with our platform. We've been in a crowdfunding nonprofit fundraising business since 2006. We've helped raise over $600 million for over 30,000 nonprofits. We're one of the leading giving day technology platforms. We really pride ourselves on listening to feedback from nonprofits that utilize our platform and creating products that make it really efficient and easy to use for nonprofit administrators. So I'll just pass it on um, to Sarah for a little bit, just to give some basics about Give Big St. Croix Valley before we get into the nitty gritty of utilizing the platform and starting off um, with your campaign. So Sarah, if you wanna take it away. Thank you, Lisa. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm kinda, I don't think I've ever done a webinar, so this is new for me. Um, Good morning, and I just wanna thank everybody. It looks like we've got 11 people on. I know I've heard of from some of you who are planning to be on. So I just want to um, cover a couple things. Um, I had two people registered last night for the nourishment meeting and I had sent out a thing saying that I canceled it. So thank you for your flexibility. Um, the roads weren't as bad as I thought, but I just didn't want to take a chance. So um, next week we have a meeting on the 18th. We have a 1.30 p.m. here at the office in Hudson and then a 5.30 p.m. at um, the library in Hudson. So you can attend one of those, you can register. Um, there's a link on the Facebook page or you can send me an email. And then also um, the 25th, we'll have one at the Amory Community Center. Um, I think we've got about 40 nonprofits registered so far, so that is great. Um, we're, our, our deadline is the 28th to get everybody registered just so that we're up and running and ready to go um, because as early as March 1, we can start receiving donations out on, the, out on your um, Mighty Cause site. So that's why we wanna, the sooner the better, um, get everyone registered. Um, let's see, I will update the toolkit as, I, um, as needed. Um, we were having some issues with some links not working with a couple people. I don't know if anyone else has ran into that, um, but we think that could be um, a firewall issue as I wasn't able to open some things on my work laptop, but I was that with my home laptop. So um, might be something with a firewall, but there is a mighty cause, um, a mighty cause support um, line that um, I'm sure Lisa will share with you that they'd be a great resource for that. And I can always email you things as needed as well. So, um, and then just make sure you're checking on Facebook with, through your organization and sharing things as we share um, events and happenings and things like that. Um, I've had a few of you ask about the community meetings and whether or not they are required for attendance. Um, I think if you are a brand new nonprofit to Give Big, I think absolutely you wanna make sure you're attending one for sure, if not all of them. Um, the first couple last month and this month will be a lot of introductory, here's what it is, here's your website. Um, 
you know, so if you attended in January, February might not be um, required or needed. However, um, if possible, I mean, it's also a networking opportunity. So as we go on, so like next month, I would say it would be more kind of strategy. Um, let's talk about the day of giving, next steps, what should we, you be doing between March and April to get ready to hit April running. Um, but it's also just a great opportunity to network with the other nonprofits doing Give Big and share ideas and things like that. Um, so if you can attend them, great. If you're, you know, if it just doesn't work out with your schedule, we get that too. But if you can at least attend one of them, and then the only other one that I would say for sure um, make plans to be at would be our April date. And those are the meetings we will hand out the marketing materials, the signs, the buttons, t-shirts if you order them, things like that. So I'll be sending out a link um, to everybody with the ordering details and so you can let me know what, if anything, you want to order. Um, so I will be putting that together and getting that out as soon as I can. So. That is really um, all I have right now. So just get registered by the 28th. And like I said, I'm here to help, so. Awesome, great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yep. And again, yes, please feel free to use the questions um, section in the GoToWebinar control panel if you have any questions about anything just Sarah went over or moving forward. All right, let's get started. So first, just to cover some of the transaction fees, um, as well as the donation booster that will be on your organization page. So the transaction fee per donation for the event is 6.9%. So just to break that, break that down, it's a 4% platform fee, plus a 2.9% and 30 cent credit card processing fee per donation. So that's gonna automatically populate at the end of the checkout process for donors, as you see on the image on the right-hand side. And there will be a checkbox where donors can uncheck that box if they're not interested in covering those transaction fees. And as you see below, once a donor unchecks that box, they'll have the original donation um, that they've added in that, so that they can pay for. So donors will always have the opportunity to not cover transaction fees if they choose, if they do not want to. So as Sarah just said, if you haven't registered your nonprofit yet for the event, please do so. It's a short form and I'll grant you access to your organization page. As well, please make sure to pay the $100 registration fee, either by check or through the online tool on the registration form. You'll be approved uh, within 24 to 48 hours, and that's when you'll be able to really um, customize and begin editing your organization page because you'll be um, created or set up as an administrator. And of course, early donations begin on March 1st. So once you have access to your organization profile page, what well, you'll notice is on the left-hand side, there is a dashboard. And this dashboard will have all the key tools and features you need to control and manage your organization page. So the first icon is the home page, which will give you quick metrics about how you're doing per month. The second option or the second icon is the profile. And this will give you all your tools to customize and edit your page. Um, and we'll go into how you can begin editing your page. The third icon, the dollar sign, is your donations tool, where you can see all of your donor data and customize your checkout process. Campaigns will give you a list of any peer-to-peer -peer campaigns or any campaigns you as, as an organization have created for your, um, for your nonprofit. And lastly, settings give you the ability to control certain aspects of your page and your presence on the platform. So customizing your profile. So this is the page editor of your profile. It will give you, you'll have the ability to customize the look and feel of your page. And most importantly, share the mission of your organization and your nonprofit. Some key things to make your organization pop up or pop out is to edit your theme. So you'll want to first upload a logo of your organization and add a background image. 
those are some small things that you can do, but they really do make a difference on an organization page when you can customize just those two things. As well, if your organization has some standard colors that you utilize maybe on your website, in your emails, you'll wanna use that as well as your theme color. If you're using your organization page as your donation page, you'll want to add a thermometer on there as well to let your donors know how you are doing um, in regards to your fundraiser. How much have you raised so far in comparison to your goal? So you can add in metrics by going to your profile and then page settings, as you see right there on the dashboard example I have. Your metrics just provide a quick snapshot of how you're doing. And you can also enable so that it shows your total amount of donations and total number of donors. And most importantly, set a calculation method. So when do you want donations in your metrics to be calculated from? We recommend to begin by March 1st, the day where you can start accepting donations so donors can really see how you are doing for the event. The description or story area of your organization profile page allows you to share the mission of your nonprofit. So the inline editor allows you to add images, videos, bullet points, numbers, anything you need to really make that area stand out and really prove to your don donors what you guys are doing. As well, if you have more information that you wanna add, but doesn't quite fit um, under your story or description, then you'll be able to add a custom tab where you can add in maybe if you have future events, if you have any other additional information that you wanna add, you can create a custom tab for it. As well, you'll have the opportunity to integrate your Facebook and Instagram onto your organization profile page. And we highly recommend this, um, especially if your organization is looking to you know, improve on the likes that you receive and the followers that you have. It's a great way to get your donors engaged in your organization and seeing your um, most recent updates. If you don't have an Instagram or you don't have a Facebook, that's perfectly fine. You'll also have the opportunity to add any other images that you want to showcase to your donors. It's a great opportunity to show what you're doing and where funds are going. Once a donation is made on the platform, you'll receive their donor information in your donations report. So this is available to review on the dollar sign donations icon of your left-hand side dashboard. So administrators will receive an email notification when a donation is made, and you'll be able to see right on the donations report, the donor name, the amount that they donated, the date of their donation, and the fundraising page, if you do have fundraisers that it's associated with. You'll be able to filter as well if you're looking for a specific date or a specific fundraising page or specific type of donor. And most importantly, you can download this information into an Excel sheet to get even more detailed information such as addresses or if they donated via desktop or mobile device. So you can really um, gather key information about your donors. You'll also have the ability to review disbursements that you've received from Mighty Cost Charitable Foundation. We send out disbursements twice a month. They're batched collectively, so you receive donations as you start accepting or receiving them. As well, you'll also receive a disbursement breakdown. So if you have any questions about what's included on your disbursement, you can click into your disbursement breakdown and see what donations are included in that disbursement as well as any fees, fees that you've incurred. If your organization plans on receiving donations via check or cash, you'll be able to add those donations onto the platform to have your fundraiser up to date. So on your donations report, there's an icon that says add offline donation. We can simply click and add the amount and donor name of the donation that you're receiving. This will add to the total 
of the metrics that you have at the top of your organization profile page. So it's always up to date. But please know offline donations do not count toward leader goal, leaderboard totals. So they will be included in your metrics on your organization profile page, but on your leaderboard on the event site, they will not be included. As I said previously, you'll have the opportunity to customize the checkout experience for your donors. So if you have certain donation levels or descriptions that you want to add to your checkout process, you can do that. As well, if you want to collect any additional donor information, such as their phone number, what company that they're donating from, etc., you can request that donors enter that information during the checkout process. As well, you'll want to customize the thank you page and thank you receipt donors receive once they make a donation. So once a donation is processed, the donors will receive a thank you page. It's the first thing they see when their transaction is completed. And you'll have the ability to customize that, add photos, images, a thank you message, anything you need. And same thing goes for the email receipt. All donors that make a donation through our platform will automatically receive a donation receipt via email. And I'll have tax deductibility information for them. But you'll have the opportunity to add as the thank you page, a thank you message as well as an image or video that you want to add. It's a great opportunity to really hit home for donors where their funds are going and what you'll be doing with their um, donations. You can also preview a thank you page and the email receipt right on the platform so that you can really see what donors will be viewing when it comes to day of event. For any organizations that will be receiving a matching grant for the event, you'll be able to display that on your organization profile page. So for those of you who are not familiar with matching grants, um, if a donor has agreed to essentially match a certain amount that you've received on the day of the event, you can add that here to publicize to donors that their donation is going to make an even bigger impact. So you would simply add in the grantor's name, they can choose to be anonymous if they want, and the amount that they're willing to grant. We have flexible matching grant options, so you can choose a one-to-one -one matching grant, two-to-one, three-to-one, four-to-one, Really, the world is your oyster and how you want to customize that. The match does not need to be paid through the platform. It can be paid in whatever way is most easiest for your organization, if that's a check or on the platform. And as well, same as offline um, gifts or offline donations, matching funds do not are not included in your leaderboard totals. So they will be included in your metrics on your organization profile page. So donors will see that updated to see the total that your organization is receiving. But on the event page leaderboard, it will not be included on there. The event board leaderboard is simply uh, to show total online donations. The settings portion of your organization profile page gives you different tools to uh, manage your organization profile page as a whole. So you can add or remove admins right here. So if you need more than one administrator, you can do so. You can have as many administrators as you need. If you need to update your legal address, you can do so here as well. In our system, we will automatically have the legal address that you have set up with the IRS. You'll want to set up your direct deposit in settings as well. If you scroll to the bottom, there will be an area that says set up EFT, electronic uh, funds transfer. Once you put in your routing and account number, you'll be asked to also attach a copy of a voided check or bank letter. Once you've added that in and submitted your information, 
it will be reviewed and you'll know if it's been approved or if we need any other additional information in regards to your direct deposit. For any organizations that do not have a bank account um, or a direct deposit, I should say, um, and would prefer check, we do have check options, but we highly recommend direct deposit for an easier and more streamlined disbursement cycle. And lastly, if you wanna change the URL of your organization profile page, you can do so right here. You can customize the end of your URL to be anything that you need it to be. All right, so now that we've gone through the key points of your organization profile page, we'll go through campaign strategy. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So you'll definitely want to use the toolkit resources that we have available on the Giving Site event. So after this webinar, we'll have much more trainings available for you guys to sit in or watch if you're not available on those days. Most importantly, we also have a lot of tips, facts, and basic how-tos available on our toolkits. You can borrow templates for email, social media, and much more, as well as images and photos that you can use to communicate in your email marketing or your social media. So please really review the nonprofit toolkit that we have available on the site, and please let us know, um, you know what you have found the most beneficial, what you know, would be most beneficial next year, because we love hearing that feedback and we wanna make sure that this giving event is as useful to you. As I stated before, early donations begin on March 1st. So you can start accepting donations as early as March 1st. All donations processed beginning March 1st will count towards the leaderboard on the day of the event. And donors do not need to create a user account to donate. So we definitely recommend starting March 1st that you begin really emailing and letting your donors know that they can donate as early as, and as soon as possible. As I noted also previously, you will receive a notification once a donation is made to your organization profile page. As well, for any donors that um, are on, um, who are participated in Give Minnesota or any other giving event, your URL, your page will be automatically redirected to your giving event site. We also, you know, we also think it's a great idea to really engage your supporters and activate them to create their own peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. So reach out to your board members, your supporters, volunteers, and ask them to fundraise on behalf of your um, organization. Our peer-to-peer -peer campaign tools are really easy and very easy for fundraisers to be, to be created. Equip ambassadors with the tools and strategy to promote your organization for the event. Allow them to tell their story about your organization and engage their own network, such as their family and friends. If you need any examples on peer-to-peer -peer campaigns of what previous organizations have done, please let us know. We're more than happy to give you some great ideas or how other organizations have utilized peer-to-peer -peer campaigns. But it's a great way to get your word out even more in your community. And lastly, spread the word out about your giving event and your organization um, and the fundraising that you're doing. Utilize social media, newsletters that you have, email marketing, your website. And most importantly, make sure you have a key understanding of what you're sending out to who. Segment your communications by donor group. Have an, a, a good list of which donors have donated previously to this event as well as your monthly donors. And plan and schedule in advance, especially since the March 1st date is coming up soon. In your email marketing, 
you really want to have a clear call to action with a link to your organization page. You want to make it clear to donors, as I've been saying, of the mission of your organization and how they can help um, get involved and really help your organization even more. As well, Give Big St. Croix Valley is having an awesome way to activate donors. They're, they have, if you haven't seen it yet, <laughs> um, what they have is an initiative um, for donors to create selfies uh, once they make a donation. So if you go to the selfless selfies portion of the giving event site, you'll be able to see a PDF that you can print out or donors can print out. And once they make a donation, they can um, take a selfie of their donation and the printout that they have. Um, and share it on social media. Now, I definitely recommend to any organization to promote this and have, you know, share on social media, like each other's posts, really activate your entire community to work together. So I'm just going to leave the last couple of minutes for any questions that anyone has about the platform. We This webinar is recorded and we will be sending it out to everyone who's currently on this webinar. And as well, if you would like the slides um, in a PDF format, we also can submit out in a PDF format as well. But um, I'll just leave um, last couple of minutes to any last questions anyone has. Alrighty. So if there are no other questions. Lisa? Um, yes. I just wanted to um, just, I, I see there's 16 on the call and some of them may have been to the community meeting, some maybe have not, but um, I just wanted to mention, you talked about the, um, the, the processing fee, the credit card processing fee at the beginning yes. of the presentation, but just one thing I wanted to note that um, has been told to me by Jess um, based on previous years, 92% um, of the donors cover those fees for the nonprofits that they're giving to. So, um, you know, when it comes down to, to it, there's, there's not a lot of cost that ends up getting passed on to the nonprofit because your donors are so great to make sure they're covering those costs for you because anybody who makes a payment online or owns a business understands credit card processing fees. So um, donors have been really great to just cover those for you. Yeah, that's a great point. And what's also great about, um, you know, our platform and how donors have been able to donate, especially with transaction fees, that that whole amount is tax deductible for them. So including that transaction fee. So it's also, you know, the donors are doing a great benefit to covering those fees, but they're also receiving tax, tax deductibility on the whole entire amount. Um, we do have resources and tools that really um, summarize all of the information that I went over. So if there are any other questions, of course, please reach out to support at mightycause.com. That's our support email. We're more than happy to um, you know, answer any questions or concerns you have or talk through any technological issues that anyone may be having. I mean, you might be receiving a response from me. Um, and of course, we do have um, a support forum as well that includes lots of articles that um, recap essentially when I went over and we'll have this recording, as I said, available to anyone um, who, um, you know, is looking for it. Um, Sarah, do you have any last words or anything else? Uh, I don't think, do you, can you give out the, um, and I've told, I'm happy to help where I can. I mean, I, I, I'm still learning the platform as well. So any technical um, questions are better left to Mighty Cause. Do you, can you give out the, um, the phone number as well for your support, your customer service? Yes. Let me get that out. I don't have it in the top of my head, but um, let me. I have, I have the one 202, but don't you guys have an 800 number as well? The 202 number would go to the same place. Okay. So it's 202-800-1618 is the technical support line. Um, like I said, I'm happy to answer what I can, but when it comes down to the technical stuff, um, I can appoint people that way. Um, 
I don't really, I'm just, I've been, we're, we're just working on getting, a, um, getting the word out. We're doing a um, letter to the editors going in the River Tones papers this week. Um, we've been trying to make sure we're, we're posting the events and then we'll be running a series of some ads and some articles as well um, as we move forward. But I just, once March hits, I know it's going to come fast, so I'm looking forward to it. But if anyone has questions um, or anything, just reach out to me, and I'm happy to answer however I can. I'm I'm only in three days a week, but I'm trying to be better about keeping my calendar up to date and my voicemail and whatnot. So, but thank you everybody for all your work so far. Um, it's been great. I'm happy with what's coming in, and everybody's been. Um, patient with me as as I'm learning too. So um, I appreciate it and look forward to working with everyone this year. All right, thank you so much. And yes, please let us know if you have any other questions or concerns. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Lisa. Bye.